thank you guys for coming to Google. It's uh, it's a pleasure having you guys here. It's uh, really, well, it's really our pleasure. I know, a pleasure too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I know you guys are here on a concert. You guys want to talk about it or? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Uh, we have yes, we have a concert tour with Symphony Orchestra for Ajit Singh Live. We um, we're doing seven cities, starting from New Jersey this Saturday onwards. So this coming Saturday, guys, mark your calendar. <laughs> we're doing in New Jersey, and then we'll be heading out to Orlando the following weekend. That would be Friday. Thereafter, we're heading back to um, San Jose. Then we're doing LA, and we're going to Houston, um, Chicago, and Dallas. So yes, seven cities. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I've been to Arjit's concert before, and one of the greatest experiences of my life. I really highly recommend it. So it's Thank really, you. really good. So, Thank you. Yeah. So and we also have a discount for our Googlers only. So um, we get 15% off. So yeah, definitely check it out. We have a Go link to it. So definitely check it out. I'll send out a reminder too. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let me ask the first question to Roshni. Okay, yeah, <laughs> please. So Roshni, when, uh, how excited were you when uh, you first got a chance to meet Arjit Singh and to work with him and to promote his concert and his songs and music here in the States, I mean, especially with a lot of Indian community here too? So. Like, honestly speaking, it's like a dream come true kind of thing, because you, you hear him, right? Yeah. You see that a fan following that he has, you know? He, his songs basically touches your soul immediately, exactly. right? So when you get to meet him personally and when you hear him, so it's, it's a whole different experience. And that yeah. too, when you see that you are working with him, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's completely a different experience, yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, Arjit, yeah, one of the greatest, greatest singers in Bollywood. So, um, so Arjit. Um, how did you get into music? How did you know from childhood that you wanted to pursue this professionally? Well, uh, this is all in the Wikipedia, though. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, my mom used to sing. Okay. Uh, and uh, we had music in, in the family, so okay. that's how I started singing. I don't even uh, remember when I started singing, so. I started Indian classical music. Uh, I practiced uh, since childhood and I've been practicing. Uh, but Bollywood is a different thing. I started in 2005. I tried my luck in Bombay, which is like typically Bollywood mm -hmm. in India. And it clicked and uh, that's how we, you know, I went. Okay. Yeah, I moved on. Okay, cool. I know you uh, actually started, um, competed in several uh, reality shows. One was Fame Gurko. Yeah, yeah. And then one was Das Ke Das Le Gya Del. Right? Yeah, that's that's the uh, only reality shows I, I've done. Like 2005, uh, right. I, I came to Mumbai and I did that. And then I, I started, you know, meeting people in okay. Mumbai and tried singing a lot of scratches. Tried singing different tunes. And that's how it is. So how did that uh, reality show affect your music career? That or affects, how that affects. Uh, what happens is uh, because uh, you're from a place where there is no industry, you know, and mm -hmm. you come to Mumbai, and that's basically the center of the music industry. Right, right. So, and then uh, that show helps you to you know, get acquainted with the musicians, the music directors, and uh, f you know the important people, the VIPs of right, right. the industry. So that's how you move on, and you know you can you can think of the new things that you can plan. And so that of course the, any reality show or any performance-based show, if you're in, that affects uh, totally in, in your career. So right. that's how we did yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. It, yeah. It's such a good. I watched your Fame Girl Cool show. It's actually <laughs> really, really, funny. yeah, really, really good. <laughs> so um, yeah, so. Um, any, so let, let's start with this. Who are your biggest inspiration? In what? Singing, um, going into classical music, anything. Yeah, but, but okay. I have done Indian classical music a lot. So my inspiration uh, was always my, my teacher, you know, who, who used to t teach me. And okay. uh, Ustad Amir Ali Khan, Ustad. Vadegulan Ali Khan Sahib, all these maestros of Indian classical music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, my mom, I had like several teachers in Mumbai as well. So these are my inspirations. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Um, 
let's say if you had a chance to work with any legendary singer, Kishore Kumar, or any of those, who would you choose? Uh, do you have a time machine though? <laughs> <laughs> we might make well, one. Kishore Kumar, I <laughs> <laughs> well, Kishore Kumar uh, is is a legend. And yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's been my favorite. Uh, so of course, who who who, 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 who wouldn't? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, okay, let's not talk about your songs. First, let's talk about. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> other songs. I mean, who is your favorite singer right now? Your favorite. There song? are many. There are many. I love uh, in the in, in this lot, uh, my, like my generation. Yeah. I like all of them. Uh, like I like Papon. I like Benny. Um, I like uh, Shalmali. Uh, you know, a lot of lot of singers. They're they're, they're doing amazing amazing job job. And uh, in the if you if you see like in seventies to two thousand, okay. I have like I have list of uh, musicians that I like, which are mostly music composers. Uh, Adi Bauman, S D Bauman, and uh, and then Nadim Shravan, A R Rahman. All these guys are like they are fantastic, you know, spectacular music they have been doing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, how about any international singers? Do you want to get in touch with or perform? Well, I don't know about uh, getting in touch with them because, <laughs> yeah. But I yeah I have like, uh, you know, John Mayer I like I like Jason Mraz I like uh, M J Michael Jackson. Yeah. That's been like there for you know, ever. Yeah. And then I like Elton John. I like uh, so many artists. I can't really remember now. It's, <laughs> it's, it's lined up, you know. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So you've done a lot of Bollywood music. Um, I know you do a lot of Bengali music. That's where you're from. Yeah. So yeah. how different is it um, singing for Bollywood and then a place where you live in other regional cities? In well, India? I started singing in uh, Bollywood first. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I didn't try in uh, Bengal. Mm -hmm. I s started singing Bengali songs, my regional songs, uh, after I got a chance to sing in Bollywood. So it's not different, it's just the language. You know? yeah. Music is, it remains the same. Mm -hmm. y it's, the technicalities are the, the thing that you need to concentrate on because the industry has other aspects as well mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if you if you see to production value of the music, if you want to understand the music production of it, these things vary. But the basic tune and the lyrics, all that process of making music are the same, so it yeah. doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Right, right. So, Roshni, so you have such a versatile singer, right? You have so many languages he can sing in, right? How do you, um, how do you prepare for a concert with such magnitude, right? with such talent? Um, how do you know you're giving the best of Arjit Singh to the audience? See, firstly, I think the, the way his songs are popular, right? I yeah. get calls, people telling me, you know, asking me, would he be singing original songs other than Hindi, you know? Mm -hmm. I said, if I do that, we are limited people of regional listeners, right? So I have to make sure that one thing that he sings, like, you know, Hindi, which everybody is going to love, eventually the people who even speaks Bengali understands Hindi more, so they'll be like, yeah, let's do that, you know, let's keep Hindi. So I think he, and he does justice to them. Right. He makes sure, I think he sings at least one line or something, <laughs> at least, you know, to do justice that, okay, I'll make sure and I'll sing. So I think it's it's all on the artist that if you have somebody like him, right. you can easily pull it off pretty well, yeah. Right, right. That That's great, yeah. yeah. So, um, Bollywood, um, so going back to Bollywood, yeah. they make about 150 movies films <laughs> every year <laughs> right i mean it's yeah. it's outstanding how many movies they make so um, they shouldn't do <laughs> <laughs> they sh should make good movies yeah. <laughs> they should make good movies right? yeah. uh, so you probably have um a lot of calls to rehearse a lot of songs and yeah. you might be put in a situation where you have to put rehearse a song very quickly or rehearse multiple songs at once it's always like that you know uh, the scene is like I need it yesterday, every time. So, <laughs> yeah. So you have pressure, uh, yeah. and uh, my manager keeps troubling me, and he <laughs> get, keeps, yeah. So because uh, there are too many songs happening, yeah. and uh, it's really really difficult to sing every other song uh, in a film, you know. So I need to keep a balance also. So I plan it that way. Okay. You know, I, I skip a lot of songs, whichever I like I sing, whichever I don't like I try to ignore it right. politely. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's how I've been managing. I don't know in future how I, I'm going to manage, but right. that's the way it is. Right, right. No, that's good. I mean, I, I've heard your songs and it's beautifully composed and sung. So. Yeah, <laughs> I, I try to do good work, whatever, you know, till, till my saturation, whatever what I can be. Yeah. No, but like your songs, To Me Ho, I mean, what a yeah, wide Yeah, that's a brilliant song. <laughs> wide range it, right? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Of course. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's amazing how you handle the yeah. pressure. So um, uh, okay, is there any song you would try to do or try to sing differently if you had a ch second chance? Sec every song. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? See, it's it's the it's the mood of it. It's not like a you know mathematical calculation that the song has to be sung this way. You know, it's. Basically, your interpretation every time, you know, what you feel and how are you today. That's, that's how you sing it. It's, it's the expression. So if you want to sing one song again, it's going to be, you can't make it the same way because it's not a recording. It's, mm -hmm. it's inside you. So you sing one song every time, it's going to be different. Right. That's, that's music. Right, right. Actually, I wanted to segue. Uh, if you guys have audience questions, um, we have two, yeah, micro yeah, two microphones. So feel free to come up. Um, so uh, basically, he's out of questions. So. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. So we at Google, um, a lot of our employees are in the tech. This is a tech company, right? Um, and uh, Google touches a lot of different industries in the world, right? Okay. Especially music and singing. Yeah. So how do you see um, technology and Google products like YouTube affect um, the music industry? How you sing songs? Um, how has Indian music evolved from? Uh, well, evolved. Music has evolved a lot. Uh, but I was checking this 365 video uh, of Google, <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, why aren't they making something with the sound? <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're making so many things with the video, and because of course sound has improved a lot uh, in all these years, and uh, because of the technology, the music has evolved a lot in terms of sound, in terms of melody, and everything, uh, the, the quality of it. Uh, so of course, technology is an uh, important, you know, important thing in, right. in every, every aspect, actually. Yeah. But Google should do something in sound, I, I think. <laughs> it will help a lot of people to bring out more, uh, you know, uh, this more criteria, more, what do you call it, more regions more opportunities in music because music has no limits and technology also has no limits. If it bounds together, it can do miracles. Yeah. Right, right. So one of the uh, things today in modern um, society are singers use a lot of auto-tuners. So See, uh, auto -tuners, uh, auto tuning is just one uh, VST. You know, you have so many VSTs which, which can completely modulate your voice and right. Transform any any of the song. Auto what auto tune does is it you know it just perfects your pitch. Right. That's the only thing that, that can do. But it, it's not it, it's I don't know why it's so hyped. It's not much actually. What we do is uh, when a singer singing uh, and uh, he's singing very nice, but there are like glitches and you know a little bit of imperfection in the pitch. Mm -hmm. We put auto tuner because that's great. You know if yeah. you, if you put auto tuner. It handles a lot of imperfection in the song. It makes more ornamented. So hey, that's right. that's nice. And of course, w any inventions have you know e either you can make it perfect or you can destroy it right. and do whatever you can. So right. <laughs> Auditon also has that aspect that people are really a lot of good singers are really really angry on Auditon because a lot of bad singers are singing a lot of songs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, I think that that depends, you know, how you're using it. So, right. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, you know, uh, like Salman Khan sang, exactly. Akshay Kumar sang. <laughs> Sounds good though. <laughs> 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 I love it. it. Sounds good. Yeah. We have an audience question. Um, what do you think about Hani Singh music? <laughs> Honey Singh, yeah. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your favorite songs by him? Well, I like uh, all the songs. Yeah. I like which song is that? That single that came out. That's a long nine-minute single. 
Which song was that? Yeah, you shot in the US. <laughs> Which song is that? Tarzan Bhai. Are you here? Yeah. Yeah, Thousand Miles is one of the songs in that album. Yeah. Desi Kalaga. Yeah, yeah. Desi Kalaga, yes, exactly. <laughs> Desi Kalaga. Oh, I love that song. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Cool. Honey is brilliant. He's one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> I no, no, it's not, it's not. I know Honey from before. He's a music producer. And uh, he used to come to Preetam uh, Chakravarti studio. And like he's been singing now. And I know him from before. So I know him very well. Yeah. Hi, I'm hi. Shweta. Hi, hi. So firstly, I've been following you since Fame Gurukul. I still remember you sang Ashik Panay Apne. And it was yes. brilliant. Uh, and I, kept, I thought then that you have to be in Bollywood. Yeah. And so, but we waited a little while, but I was glad to see that you made it big. Worth the wait, no? Um, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, secondly, I went to your concert last year. Brilliant. So anyone who's thinking about it, go. It's just amazing. The one thing My I did feel last year was you sang other people's songs too. Your yeah. songs are way better. So sing your songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I, I, have a, I just had a baby two months ago, so I will not be there this time. Congratulations. But I will be there next year if you come again. Uh, yes, um, of course. So I just want to ask you, like, what is your hardest song that you sang? Because I know you have such a range. You've done Lalish, which is super classical. You've done Elahi, you've done Kabira. You just have this amazing range. Yeah. I think after Sonu Nigam, you're the first guy who has such a range. Thank you. Um, so what is the hardest song, number one? And secondly, what's your favorite song? And I have to go back because my three-year-old wants to sit Please, in. please. <laughs> uh, hardest song, OK. Maybe the simplest song uh, is the hardest song to uh, sing because you need to express it properly. So, so any song which is the simplest is going to be hardest. And uh, my favorite song is definitely not mine. So I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but my favorite song would be Th there are a lot of songs, but I can remember now is Koi Faria from Jagjit Singh. Yeah. Yep. Have another one? Yeah. Hi, Rajit. Thanks Hi. for coming to um, Google. Hi. So uh, just like um, the lady just said, um, we've all been following you since Fame Gurkha. I know my entire family voted for you. You didn't win. We were very upset, but <laughs> glad, that, glad that you're here. Um, my question to you is, um, a lot of us found out about you, or rather, we started hearing more about you after Tumhiyo the song from uh, 2012, I guess. But, and since then, just there have been like hits after hits, and we all just listen to you every, every, every day, most of the time. But I wanted to ask you, when was that moment when you realized you've arrived? Like, you've been doing this for, for, for about just 10 years, but was there a time during this journey when you realized, okay, I've arrived now? Or has that moment still not come, which, is, which means we all still probably are going to get a lot more from you? Okay. Nice question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, it's been always like, uh, see, I, I've been an athlete. I, I'm really sorry I don't look like, but <laughs> so it's, it's like, you know, you put a goal, you put an ambition. So like it's 100 meters and then 200 meters. So you arrive every day, but you never arrive, you know, so it's like that. So I had goals in my life. And I had goals, not like I have to read somewhere, but I had goals like uh, I need to sing this, I need to sing that, I need to sing, you know, all the other aspects. So these were my goals. It, it's it's like a sport, you know. So you arrive uh, once you sing that, and once you sing this, and a lot of other things that you can think of. So after that, a point comes when you think of something, you imagine. Uh, genre, or Im you you know, imagine something which you have never seen, and then you look for it. That's also a journey. So I think that journey has started. So it's it's going to be this way till till the end. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Hi, I'm Manushi. Hi. Um, Hi. I have a quick question. So when before um, you were doing music for yourself, as opposed to now you're doing it professionally, um, how has it changed for you? Like, how do you think about it differently, or has it not? It's uh, exhausting, <laughs> <laughs> because when you uh, do music for yourself, you don't have any responsibility, you know, and you don't have to think of uh, any boundaries, like you have to perform today, or you have to do this, 
and that. You don't think, any, you know, you, you just sing and you do your work. The moment professionalism comes, you, you have responsibility. So you need to think of, you know, you perfect your thing and you, ha you know, work harder and and harder and you know you you reach a point when you you know start to feel scared about it because people are going to expect a lot from you so all those pressures come so that's the only difference otherwise music wise do you feel anything different that you could have done differently or if you had a chance you would have done something? I told you every song every every time maybe because uh, it's it's an ever ending process. It's you can't really calculate music. So I I I always think that whatever I've done, let's just forget it and move on to the next thing. That's the only thing, way to go. Otherwise, I'll be frustrated. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. What we want to know is, as Google employees, we have uh, a lot of people have passion for music and the performing arts. What advice do you have for people in the technology sector to follow? What you do? I'm the wrong person, though. <laughs> Technology. Okay. I need to think. <laughs> Maybe with much more creativity. Whatever you do, whatever you discover, it's always creative. Techni Technology is for creativity in which ways. But I think whoever wants to do something in technology, they want. They. I think they should. They should, you know, find a way to their imagination inside. That's the only way to go. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think I'm under somebody's waiting. Okay. Yeah. Ah. If I may have one last question. I have. Um, love Tumio, love the unplugged version, even better in my opinion, just because the harmonic chords are great. <laughs> um, when you're making music for the movies, do you visualize, do they give you a clue as to what you should be aiming towards or do you sort of make something and then they work with it eventually? Or how does that entire process work? Well, it depends. Uh, if you're scoring for music, uh, like if, if you have a film and you have to score for it, then of course you have scenes and uh, you have a proper brief of the emotions and how it, it's going to go. So uh, that's easier because you have everything in, you know, in front of you. And you can actually sit with the director and understand what's the mood of the scene, and then you score it, score a melody. And there is another way of doing it: is you don't have a film, you don't have a video or as such, you just have a script. So you have to visualize. It. You're the director. That's time. You know, you you have everything. You like you can choreograph. You become the director of it. You become the cinematographer, the light engineer, and whatever you want to be. You be that, and you, you know, imagine and score. And later on, if the music is ready, and they they'll you know do whatever after it. Yeah. Are you usually satisfied with how everything works out? You're you're never satisfied, bro. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, thank you. Thank you. Hey, um, thanks again for coming to Google. Hi. So um, you've been known to like you know be a little shy as compared to other well, like? stars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I was doing research on you, and that's my understanding. <laughs> uh, so actually, yeah, in my research, right, I found out. Uh, I read this article on Forbes, which said you know you go to your studio at like midnight to stay away from like fans or photographers or the media. And then I've read another article which is where you said that the Forbes article was fake. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to hear from you. Which one did it happen, not happen? And, you know, and what's your take on general? Well, like, Forbes uh, was a fake, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> OK, they did a really good job. <laughs> <laughs> Convincing you. <right>? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like, what's your take on uh, like you know um, the media in India and uh, the idolization of uh, superstars? How has that? How has your life changed? Uh, you know now as compared to like. I think uh, we have a huge population. That's the problem. You know, everyone is becoming <laughs> a part of media, and they are not studying media, and they you know they have a camera and they know how to talk bullshit and then just just you know they blabber about it. So that's when the problem comes. Otherwise, serious media people, they are really, really genuine and they want to do best. Uh, with Bollywood, with uh, 
the whole uh, you know music scenario or the film scenario there there have been like page 3 every day so you can't really go with the media at all because they talk anything it's just you know, random stuff they they do so i think it's better that uh, if you follow them on twitter if you follow them on uh, facebook or you know whatever social media they are in that's the best thing to do <laughs> <laughs> thanks <Yeah. laughs> Hi, Arjit. Thanks for coming. Hi. Um, as it's been mentioned, um, you're a wonderful singer. You play the piano. You play the guitar. I'm a particular fan of your MTV well, Unplugged. I don't play it like a pro, but I, I, I do. <laughs> uh, so I, I play the guitar as well, and I appreciate how prominent the guitar often is in a lot of your songs. So I was just wondering, is there a particular instrument that you have found to be most effective in helping you convey your emotion or thoughts in the song? Or is there another instrument that you hope to learn and pick up along the way that you would like to see in some mm. of your new singles? Well, I, I, uh, I think I love the piano. I, I think it's the you know, most melodic and percussive combination of an instrument which is made. Uh, but that's still unfair to a lot of instruments because I don't know them. Uh, I would like to uh, learn, it's a very difficult instrument, but I would like to learn cello. Because that has, uh, it's, it's a very scientific, scientific instrument, you know. But I tried it, it's, I think, not my chair, my, not, not, my, not my cup of coffee, you know. It's, <laughs> it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult. It's fretless, it's, uh, it's heavy, it's, it's like your grandfather, you know. It, <laughs> it's really difficult. I, I think I, I, I would call it off. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, what, are, what is life after music? Are you into filming or directing or? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, would, uh, I, I filmed something where I thought I would, I, it was, it's like an experiment that I've done, you know, with a 5D and a 1DC Canon products and lenses. I've started shooting things, you know, and I've made something which came out nice and I kind of I kind of like it it's okay it's not like a film but it's a feature length film that I've done I'm still working on it still still working on the BGM and 5.1 mix it's most probably to be ready by this year okay. yeah. wow yeah I think is okay which one <laughs> go ahead sir sir okay uh, Basically, my question is uh, not from me, it's from my son, 12 years old. Okay. Uh, he's your big fan. Thank and you. And he's undergoing puberty, and he has asked <laughs> me to ask for your advice as to how he should do the vocal training during puberty. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I mean, <laughs> Just tell him to sing <laughs> all the time. You know, it's going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> any any particular uh, like I mean you you had your classical training going on so any particular thing from that side or well I think I don't have a one liner for this you know okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay I think it's we should we should be happy and just let it go it's okay, okay. it's gonna be fine yeah. yeah okay I'll tell him thank you thank you thank you well um, yes. first of all I want to congratulate you. Uh, you're one of those singers who really know how to carry himself with a great style and class and you make oh. all of us very very proud uh, One thing I will say that you know your song like Tum Hi Ho is literally the anthem and I think in form of romance It's it will carry that chart uh, for the rest of the world this show um, That you're presenting uh, you know in in the US today uh, You've, you've chosen very selective cities, and uh, uh, it's very rare that we see an Indian show coming with a symphony orchestra. And uh, you've been very selective uh, in doing just few shows, but you want to put your full effort on this particular tour. Uh, can you tell us uh, the uh, grand symphony uh, that's performing with you, and how this show is going to be different that only about seven cities are going to be experiencing? Yeah, it's uh, the symphony thing uh, is a little new for me as well. Uh, it's it's first of all uh, Indian music uh, has nothing to do with 
symphony because symphony is purely Western classical. But we're blending it. People have been doing it in which ways uh, from 70s and 60s actually. We had Bombay uh, Symphony Orchestra in the in the past, but uh, we don't have much musicians in India. You know, where they are not keen on. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a propaganda. You know, uh, so we don't have good musicians who can play horn section and the string section, woodwind section. We don't have uh, good instruments as well. So uh, that was something which we were lacking. And we tried to, to uh, you know, we tried to do a blend of an alternative music and symphonic music together so that it doesn't get monotonous and at the same time you have a, you know, classic flavor to your songs. I think A.R. Rahman is the only guy who's been really working hard in this uh, for a very very long time and he has worked on it so hard that uh, I think after five years you'll get musicians uh, who can play symphonic structure in India as well in Chennai they, he's doing it so I think music will rise for now what you know our thing is if we want to do symphony we have to hire people from outside so I did Dubai uh, gig with symphony so we had to book uh, symphony orchestra from London and then we did uh, London and then we did Mumbai but Mumbai we only had Chennai strings and a couple of woodwinds so we had to compromise this time it's the hub of symphony uh, anyway the US is like the hub of the center of symphony orchestra so we had good musicians coming up and we you know gathered all the musicians and it's it's like a richness to your music you know it gives a different flavor to it it has a different texture it's very cinematic and if you can Imagine uh, a film with a lot of orchestra playing, a lot of musicians playing, and uh, giving you a grandeur of it. So the symphony would be sounding like that in the show. But at the same time, because I, f I funk it up, you know, I because I we, we have two guitarists, one bassist, one drummer. So we have an alternative metal rock kind of a band. That blending with the symphonic orchestra, it's giving it a different flavor. I'm liking it. So. That's how you're doing it, and I'm really, really, uh, I'm not sure about uh, how it's going to sound because most of the time I'm lost with the symphony thing. It's so big and it's so difficult to handle all the musicians and the technicals. I, you know, I it was really, really difficult for me all these all these days. But I'm hoping for the best. I have a lot of shows. I think first two shows, and after that, I'll be all uh, in, you know, in form, and uh, I can see everything on stage. I guess. Well, I, I will say one thing. Uh, I'm the promoter who's doing the show in Houston. People are flying in from different states and different cities just to be a part of that show. You've always been a man of few words, but um, the magnitude and the, uh, you know, the quality that you always focus on is the reason why we are all here at the Google Studio, and I really want to congratulate you Thank for you. that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, I have a question for you. So. Um, for the people who want to learn singing, would you ever consider opening a school to teach your style, your technique, um, to teach music to other people? You mean me teaching? Yeah. Yes, uh, not now because uh, I'm still learning. I think uh, I would be ready by another 20 years. <laughs> I like just ready to, I think, learn, you know, teach a couple of people, not everyone, because teaching is a different art altogether. Right. So I, I'm, I'm learning to do it because it's, it's very, very important, you know, to teach music because it's not only, and to, to understand that if you know music, it's not necessarily you have to sing in Hollywood or Bollywood or any other platform. Mm -hmm. Singing is an art and you can sing for yourself. Making it a career is a different option. So we need to understand any uh, performing art is not commercial always. So that's the thing I, th I think, I, I'm still struggling on it. I, I'm still looking for an answer where I can understand myself that how am I going to convince people. So that's going to take time and I have a plan for, for a school later on. So that's going to be kick ass. I'll be. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. cool. So this concludes yeah. our, our talk for today, but okay. we would like to give a huge round of applause to Mr. Okay. Arjit Singh. Thank you so much for coming here. It's my pleasure. <laughs>
Thank you.